In this lesson, we are going to look at the regulations governing mass and balance contained in EU Ops, Section 1, Subpart J. The regulations cover the operators and pilots' responsibilities in determining the aeroplane's mass and center of gravity prior to flight. This will also cover establishing standard mass values. Let us look at the responsibilities of the operator as defined in EU Ops. The operator must ensure that before flight, the loading, mass and centre of gravity of the aeroplane comply with the limitations laid down in the aeroplane flight manual and the operations manual, which could be more restrictive. The operator is to ensure that the person supervising the loading confirms that the prepared load and distribution are in accordance with the documentation. The supervisor's name and signature must appear in the relevant document as is highlighted here. The operator must ensure that, prior to departure, the commander checks the loading documentation and signs once accepted. You can see an example of the commander's signature block here. EU Ops states that the operator, when establishing the takeoff mass of the aeroplane, must use either the actual weighted mass values or the standard mass values laid down in EU Ops. The standard masses cover crew, passengers and their baggage. We will look at each requirement in turn. On screen, you will see an example of a mass value table, which we will examine later. Firstly, let us look at the requirements for crew and their baggage. The operator, when determining the dry operating mass, must use either the actual weighed masses or standard masses of 85 kilograms for flight crew and 75 kilograms for cabin crew and their hand baggage. Any additional baggage must be accounted for. Before proceeding with the mass values of passengers, it is important that we know how passengers are classified. On screen, we can see that passengers are grouped into, firstly, adults who are either male or female, age 12 or over. Secondly, children, those who are age 2 and less than 12. Lastly, infants who are aged less than 2. Let us now look at the mass values for passengers and baggage. The operator shall compute the mass of passengers and checked baggage either by weighing or by using standard mass values found in EU Ops 1. If the passenger seats available are less than 10, a verbal statement from the passenger can be used, to which a constant is added. The method preferred by the operator must be stated in the operations manual. It is most important to understand that all checked baggage must be weighed. We can now look at the specific mass values which are shown in table form in EU Ops 1. Table 2 is the mass value for passengers for aeroplanes with 19 seats or less and includes hand baggage. The table is shown on screen and you should familiarise yourself with the contents. Articles such as an overcoat, umbrella, small handbag or purse, a book or small camera are not considered as hand baggage. If no hand baggage is carried, or where it is accounted for separately, 6 kilograms may be deducted from the table mass value. Where an aeroplane has 20 passenger seats or more, Table 1 in EU Ops 1 is used. Note that it is split up into male and female columns, but as an alternative, the third column can be used for all adults if there are 30 or more passenger seats available. The holiday charter flight means a charter flight solely intended as an element of a holiday package.
The final part of mass values concerns the checked baggage masses which are documented in Table 3, EU Ops 1. It is important to note that for aeroplanes with 19 passenger seats or less, the checked baggage must be weighed. When the total is 20 seats or more, the standard masses in Table 3 can be used. Here on screen, Table 3 is displayed and you will notice that the flights are separated into four types, which we will now define. For the purpose of Table 3, a domestic flight means a flight with origin and destination within the border of one state, and the baggage standard mass is 11 kilograms. The second type of flight is titled within the European region, which means flights other than domestic whose origin and destination are within a specified area of Europe detailed in EU Ops 1. The baggage standard mass used for this flight is 13 kilograms. The third type of flight is titled intercontinental, which means other than flights within the European region, a flight with origin and destination in different continents. The baggage standard mass used for this flight is 15 kilograms. The final type of flight is called all other, and this has a baggage standard mass of 13 kilograms. We have been discussing checked baggage, and this must not be confused with cargo or freight. It is vitally important to understand that all cargo or freight must be weighed. The term fleet value was used in an earlier lesson. So let us now look at the definition. For a group of aeroplanes of the same model and configuration, an average dry operating mass and centre of gravity position may be used. This is known as the fleet value and is used for each aeroplane in that fleet and not its individual value. To be part of the fleet value, individual aeroplanes must meet certain tolerances. We are not required to learn the tolerances, but they can be found in EU Ops 1. EU Ops 1 requires the operator to ensure that the loading of its aeroplanes is performed under the supervision of qualified personnel and that the loading of freight is consistent with the data used in calculating mass and balance. The operator must also ensure that floor strength limitations are complied with, along with running load, cargo hold mass limits, and seating limits. We will be dealing with these limitations in detail in later lessons. EU Ops 1 requires the operator to ensure that the operational centre of gravity envelope accurately accounts for allocation of passenger seats and the number of passengers per seat row. Additionally, the envelope must account for cargo in individual compartments and fuel in individual tanks. If the operator cannot fulfil the requirements of EU Ops 1, operational margins would have to be applied. An example which could compromise the centre of gravity limits is where an operator allows free seating. In this case, the crew would have to take corrective action to prevent centre of gravity limit exceedance. The in-flight centre of gravity must also remain within the operating limits which means that the effect of passenger movement and fuel consumption must be accounted for. There is a considerable amount of paperwork involved in mass and balance, and EU Ops 1 outlines the operator's responsibility for producing the documentation. It states that the operator must establish the documentation prior to flight 
specifying the load and its distribution. The documentation must enable the commander to determine that the load and its distribution are such that the mass and balance limits are not exceeded. On occasions, following completion of the mass and balance documentation, there may be some last minute changes to the flight. It could be that some additional passengers or some extra freight have been accepted at the last moment. EUOPS 1 states that operators must establish a procedure to accommodate these last minute changes to the load. Part of the documentation must include a section that allows for the adjustment of the load without having to recalculate the whole document. There are limitations imposed upon the amount of adjustment and we will be looking at this area later on in the course. On screen, you can see part of a load and trim sheet illustrating the last minute change block. The changes must be brought to the attention of the aeroplane commander. During this lesson, we have covered the important parts of the EU Ops 1 regulations governing mass and balance. This has included the operator's responsibilities for the loading of aeroplanes, the standard mass values used for crew and passengers, and the documentation required for mass and balance. Concluding with the provision of last-minute changes to mass and balance documentation.